Hi everyone, my name is Grace Chang and I'm an attorney here at Song & Associates. Today we're going to be going over a success story about a marketing specialist who filed for an EB-3 and this case was approved without an RFE and it's dealing with ability to pay. So I'm excited to share this with you. When you do an EB-3 or EB-2 perm case, uh, a lot of times the process can take two, three, and now even like four or five years before the applicant gets the green card. And that's a long time for the client to wait. And one of the core requirements for the I-140 petition stage is that the company has to prove that it has the ability to pay the prevailing wage from the time that the labor cert is filed up until the green card is awarded to the applicant. So for a company, um, Maybe they had the ability to pay. Maybe they had strong tax returns and strong revenue, strong income, strong assets. But as you know, during while the application is processing, there could have been some unexpected circumstances, which uh, you know where the company kind of dipped in profit. For example, just recently during COVID, um, as you guys are aware, there was a huge disruption in the supply chain um, because freight costs just skyrocketed. So this was an instance where it you know, impacted our clients as well, where they engage in import and export. And in 2021, they had all this inventory in warehouses um, and they spent exorbitant amounts on shipping costs. And so even though the revenue stayed about the same, their expenses were so much higher than in the past um, as they're covering the costs. And so uh, the tax return numbers were not that great in 2021. I've seen other clients um, come to us with I-140 RFEs or even with a denial based on solely based on this issue of ability to pay. So a lot of times um, practitioners or even the clients themselves focus on the qualifications, focus on the ad process. That's all really important, but it's just as important to advise our clients, to advise our corporate clients, hey, you need to maintain the ability to pay for however long it takes from the time you file the labor cert to the point where the green card is issued because USCIS can even ask about it at the final interview stage. Traditionally, we all rely on the 2000 for uh, William Yates memo where it talks about three different ways that you could prove ability to pay. The first is through net current income or two, um, net current assets. So then we would look on schedule L and see if your net current assets minus your current liabilities, if that's higher than prevailing wage, or you can prove it by showing that the, the beneficiary is already being paid this wage. So let's say the beneficiary is already hired in H-1B or L-1 or O-1, OPT, um, and is already being paid the prevailing wage, then obviously then the company can afford this wage. Now, in this case, the employee was, uh, or the prospective employee is outside of the country and is not currently employed by the, bene uh, by the employer. So that was out of the picture. So we had to rely on the financial situation, whether it's going to be through net current income or net current assets. Um, and both were not looking good in the 2021 tax returns. And in this case, there was an extraordinary circumstance, right? We had a global pandemic and it affected everyone in the world. So in that type of situation, you want to show, hey, you know, the business was doing well. Um, and this was an extraordinary circumstance outside of the business control. And you want to also show that the the business has already recovered or will recover, right? And these are the factors that we can prove or that we can submit to prove that it will do so. Hey, look at how much inventory we have in our warehouse. Look at how in 2022, the sales figures are doing much better. Um, freight costs have, for the most part, returned to normal. Um, we can include industry articles showing, you know, the status of uh you know, how, how this industry is recovering from COVID or uh, on the flip side, articles talking about how the freight costs were astronomical in 2021, right? So it really did affect not just our client, but everyone else too um, that were in a similar situation. And then on top of that, we can also submit supplementary financial documents such as bank statements, which we did in this case as well, and any other documents to prove the strength of the financial status of the company. They're very cooperative. Um, they obviously did not want to start over the case, if at all possible, um, because they've already waited so long to get to this point. Um, so, you know, they were working day and night with their accountant, with their CPA, with their financial advisors, uh, really coming up with the documents we needed. And 
We actually anticipated that there would be a request for evidence by USCIS, but we got really lucky. We submitted everything right the first time and we got approved. They're thrilled.